Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Breeze coming to you with a new NBA 2K16 tip, but right before we get into that guys, I just want to let you guys know that I am very, very, very sorry for the lack of uploads within the past couple days, within the past week, and guys, don't worry if you're thinking that I'm going to get inconsistent on you, you're thinking I'm starting to get lazy, don't worry, that is not the case whatsoever. I came down with a very bad sickness after going away for a couple of days, but don't worry, I am back. I'm feeling a lot better, and I'm going to be back on the grind. I still have plenty of tips to show you guys. I still have plenty of content that I want to put out. Don't worry. I'm still going to be grinding, and I'm going to be putting out a lot of videos in the days to come. But with that being said, guys, let's get into the video. So first things first, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build up a good bronze team, whether you're on a budget or whether you got a lot of MT. This is going to be a very good bronze team, and it's going to be more of a budget team. You're going to have a couple of guys that stand out from the pack, but with that being said, this team is mainly for, obviously, any challenge that requires you to use bronze players, but mainly for the road to playoffs where you need to use a full bronze lineup with just one silver. So as you're going to see me right here, I'm going to put the maximum buyout at 1400 Now, the goal is to not actually spend 1400 or 1500 or anything above a thousand really but if you want to have that standout bronze player you want to have that more of that star bronze type player whether it be a knockdown shooter whether it be someone who can drive and shoot you definitely might want to spend a little extra on at least one or two bronze players and that's what you're gonna see me do in this video starting it off as you guys can see what I did is I scrolled down and I used the attribute categories as filters so I filtered out for speed and for a three ball. As you can see, this guy right here, Chris Babb, he's got an 80 plus speed and an 80 plus three ball. So that means that he can move and he can shoot. And then the next thing I'm going to look for is his driving layup. Now, as you can see, his driving layup is a 78 and he's six foot five. Now, his speed is actually 78. That's fine. I forgot I did put the speed filter to 74. Because anything above 74 speed is fine. And to me, a shooting guard who can shoot, drive, and move. He's definitely worth a spot on my team for a bronze player. Now keep in mind guys, I'm not gonna be comparing these bronze players to obviously gold or silver players. I'm gonna be comparing them to other bronze players. And in my opinion, Chris Babb is more of an all around offensive star as a bronze player, and that's why I picked him up. Now the next player I was looking for is a point guard. Now as you saw, I had J.R. Smith at point guard starting out the video. I'm gonna be moving him to starting shooting guard and I'm actually gonna pick up this guy right here, Jarrell McNeil. As you can see, he has a 94 steal, pretty decent lateral quickness, decent driving light at a 73, and a decent standing shot three at a 76 with a decent ball control at a 75. He's not the greatest at passing, but you're never gonna have an all-around beast at any position, especially when you're going for bronze players. So with that being said, Jarrell McNeil, great defensive pickup and he's able to finish a little bit around the rim, knock down some threes, and he's able to control the ball well enough to get a spot on my squad. Now, next player you're gonna see me try to go for, you're gonna see me go for more of a specialist spot up shooter. As you can see, guys, shooters go at a premium, especially for bronze players, guys. Bronze shooters go at a premium, and if you want a good bronze shooter, you're gonna have to pay at least 1500 MT plus. Now that being said, as you're going to see, I dropped down that standing shot three-point rating to 77, which that'll show me pretty much any player that has a three ball of 77 or higher. And guys, your three ball doesn't have to be in the 80s for you knockdown. As long as it's a 77 or higher, 76, 77 or higher, you should be able to knock down threes consistently if you get the release down and you're wide open. Now that being said, as you can see right here, I find Mirza Toledovic. Ian Clark and you're gonna see me find Henry Walker now all three of these guys are definitely decent players in their own way Toledovic he's a great stretch four. not only can he rebound but he's actually got a little bit of speed on him and that's what you're gonna see me go for guys you're not gonna see me go for many of these guys who got like a 25 speed like a 40 speed if you're a 50 plus speed you're probably gonna find a spot on my squad especially at the power forward position Toledovic brings some decent speed for a power forward. I believe it's in the 50s. So he's going to be able to stretch the floor. He's going to be able to spot up over in the corner. We're going to be able to stretch four. He's going to be able to knock down shots. Now, as you can see, Henry Walker, great dunk rating with that 90 dunk, 67 driving layup and 80 standing layup. So he's not horrible at finishing around the rim. 
but he's got that 78 standing three-point shot. So not only can he drive, he can knock down shots from outside. If he's open, he can move a little bit. And that is why we're picking up Henry Walker. And obviously, I already explained why we picked up Toledovic. As you can see, I'm starting to fill out my starting five. And that is actually what I'm probably going to run with as my starting five going into the road to playoffs. Don't worry, guys. You will see plenty of road to playoffs gameplay showing this team that we're putting together very soon. I wanted to make sure that I got on a video showing you guys how I put together a budget lineup that I feel like can perform at the highest level possible based on my skills, even though it is a bronze lineup. So as you can see right here, I find Joffrey, whatever his last name is, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it. I believe it's French, but I cannot pronounce his last name, but I find this dude Joffrey. He's got good speed, 74 speed. Keep in mind, he's a power forward, decent rebounding, 78 driving layup. That comes at a premium for power forwards, guys. A big man with a good driving layup, very rare, and he's got the 80 standing layup, and he's six foot 11. So he's got size, he's got speed, he can finish around the rim, and he's a decent rebounder. And if you noticed, I actually had my rebounding filtered to where the lowest possible rebounding out of all the players I searched for was a 70. So his rebounding was in the 70, so he's a decent rebounder. He's got speed, and he can finish around the rim with great height. Obviously, that comes at a premium, so that boy Joffrey, definitely a great budget pickup for the power forward spot. Now, as you guys can see, I start looking up shooting guards and small forwards. And really what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for a super budget player that maybe can shoot, maybe he's good on defense, maybe he can drive, but really I'm just looking for a player who really stands out in at least one category that goes for less than 850 MT. Now it's very hard to find a player that goes for less than 750 MT. It's very hard to get those guys down in like the 600s and 500s. It can be done, but... Right now, since I feel like I got my core guys, my core team, once you feel like you got your core team out of the way and you're really just going for guys that you might want to put in for specific situations, this is when you actually do that. So as you can see, I purchased Ian Clark, who I was looking at earlier, and he's not the tallest guy, but he's not the shortest guy. You know, he's 6'3", he's a shooting guard, he can shoot, as you can see right here with that 78 three ball, he can drive with that 76 layup and he can move a little bit with that 76 speed. So again, guys, you know, he's not elite. He's not above average. He's really just kind of an average player on offense, but he can do a little bit of everything. You know, he can drive a little bit, he can shoot a little bit, and he can move. So, you know, it's not a bad pickup. And you gotta remember, we're going for bronze players, guys. So any rating in the high 70s, I'd consider decent to pretty good because we're not going to expect these guys to have 90s or really high 80s ratings without going for a super premium price that we don't want to pay for a bronze player. Now, as you guys can see right here, still looking for bronze players, still looking for gems. I see a Greg Oden and I see a Quincy Miller. Now, Quincy Miller, as you can see, doesn't really stand out in too many categories, but he's decent all around on defense. And that is why we pick him up, guys. We pick him up to hopefully be a stretch four because he actually can rebound a little bit with a 63 defensive rebound. So really, we just picked him up to be that stretch four off the bench because he is six foot nine. So as you guys can see right here, I'm kind of just looking at other players, other budget players, seeing if there's any hidden gems in here for a cheap price. And really, I end up just going with Greg Oden. I mean, he's got the 75 standing layup, decent post game, 85 standing dunk. And he's actually not the slowest center in the game. You know, he's a 41 speed, so he's definitely pretty slow. But there's a ton of bronze centers that have like 25 speed. So I was definitely happy to see that he can actually do a little bit on offense and defense and move a little bit for a low rated center. As you guys can see right here, I'm just kind of looking around for more budget players. And I'm looking for a budget point guard, maybe a shooting guard, but really just another budget player for the perimeter and as you can see I come across Ledster Hudson as you guys can see right here 84 pass perception 84 steal so I definitely was keeping that in mind of course you gotta look through all the players you never know when you might find a hidden gem and I had this particular search of course for nothing above 850 and I was looking through pretty much all the bronze players that were around between 800 and 850 bio because I'd already checked all the other players below 800 and I end up going with Lester. He can shoot a little bit, he can drive a little bit, and he's got that 84 steal, 
with the 84 pass perception. So he'll be a really good defending point guard off the bench, and he'll be able to drive a little bit with the 73 layup. And with that 76 three ball, with the high 70 speed, he'll definitely be able to knock down open shots, and he'll be able to move a little bit, and he'll be able to keep up. Now, as you can see right here, I've run out of MT. And really, guys, if you come down and just needing a couple bronze players, and you really don't mind who you pick up, because obviously I only had two spots left, guys. I only had two spots left to fill. All you got to do is just go open two of the cheapest packs, those really cheap League Pass packs, I think they're called. Whatever the cheapest pack is, it's only like 1800 VC. And I pick up two bronze players. You're pretty much guaranteed to get a bronze. If you don't get a bronze, you'll get a silver. You can just quick sell the silver or sell the silver on the auction and then pick up a bronze. But as you can see right here, I get an Earl Baron, who I have no intentions to use as I won't be needing him. And I get this man named Rashad Vaughn or Rashad Vaughn, either or, he's a decent player as you can see, nothing special on defense, but he can shoot a little bit, he can drive a little bit, and he's got a little bit of speed on him. So with that being said, obviously, he is going to be useful to the team. How useful he's going to be, I'm not sure because, of course, I already have 10 guys that I'm pretty confident in, so he's pretty much the 11th player. So he could be more of a specialist guy, you know, if I need some offense, and, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm not liking the way Lester is playing since he's more of a defensive point guard. I could always bring in Vaughn and move someone else to point guard. So, you know, I can move around this lineup a lot. And this lineup's pretty versatile. And that's what I look for, guys. I'm looking for guys who can drive, looking for guys who can shoot, looking for a couple guys here that might be able to do a little bit on offense but can D up, looking for guys I can stretch the floor with. And I'm looking for guys who can body down low and get boards. And I believe I have a little bit of all of that with this team. Now, obviously, with Simbular down low, 7'5", big. And, you know, obviously, he's decent around the rim. He can board. And then, obviously, with J.R. Smith, who can shoot, drive, play D, pretty much do a little bit of everything. I feel like this team I can have a lot of success with. And you'll be seeing how successful I am with this team in the next video, guys. I am going to be showing you guys myself playing with the squad going up through the ranks in the road to playoffs and then once i get to the point where i'm using a silver lineup with one gold player i'll be showing you the best budget silver lineup as well so that being said guys this being boy breeze i'm signing out hope to see you guys in the next video if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like on the video and if you're not subscribed already i don't know what you're doing subscribe to the channel a lot more fire tips to come again guys once again i will be picking up the pace on the uploads so be excited be hype and i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace